What's up, guys? I'm Dr. Gabrielle Lyon here with my longtime mentor and best friend, Dr. Donald Lehman. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about cholesterol. I recently made a post in IG that talked about cholesterol and it really got a lot of heat because I actually eat five eggs for breakfast. And it's really interesting. People still believe that the dietary cholesterol you eat make a huge impact on your blood level cholesterol. And in fact, Donna and I were just talking that in 2015, the dietary guidelines dropped their cholesterol recommendations. They no longer felt the cholesterol was an issue in terms of dietary ingestion. And I just wanna point out that in 1984, the Surgeon General had suggested that we decrease our intake of cholesterol and it went from 700 to below 300. And the, the thought was that if you reduce your dietary cholesterol from 700 to below 300, that they would eradicate heart disease, but none of that happened. So again, we're talking about a false narrative and this one really dies hard. So we are six years later, people still believe that the cholesterol that you are ingesting in your diet and that you should reduce your dietary cholesterol impacts blood cholesterol. So Don, I'm going to just have you talk about this and, and uh, just take it away. Yeah, it, it really is a theory that dies hard. I think, I think it's useful to realize where the theory came from. And if you look back in the, you know, sort of ancient history back into the 70s, uh, there was uh, what's known as the seven country study, Ansel Keys, and there's also what's known as the Framingham study. Uh, Ansel Keys sort of notoriously uh, believed that cholesterol caused heart disease. And so he surveyed a lot of countries, 21 in fact, and unfortunately for him found no association with all, so he, at all with heart disease. And so then he began cherry picking till he found seven of the countries that gave him the line he wanted. And so and he the was, seven country study. Have a seven country study, even though he had 21. Uh, so, and then there's the Framingham study, which is, was always pointed to, but it's important to recognize that they found a lot of relationships to heart disease, genetics, uh, smoking, obesity, and way down the line was cholesterol. And cholesterol, basically, of the people who got heart disease, only 48% actually had high cholesterol. So the majority didn't. So, you know, that was the, the, the sort of the issue of it. Um, the thing about cholesterol in the heart, in the blood, is that what we know is long term, blood cholesterol is basically set by genetics, first and foremost. It's, we produce it in the liver. Uh, cholesterol would actually be an essential nutrient, uh, except for the fact that we produce it in our liver. Enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase is really critical on that. And the bottom line there is that the more you eat, the less you produce. And so it, the thing to, re, and, and, and the reality is we only absorb about 50% of what we eat. Right. So for example, just for easy numbers, if we're eating 400 milligrams per day, uh, we actually need a thousand milligrams. It's an essential nutrient at a thousand milligrams per day. It's, it's the structure of all of our cells. And so if we're eating 400, we absorb 200. That means the body makes 800. If you shift to only say absorbing 200 or eating 200, now you're getting, so now the body has to shift to making 900. Sometimes that takes a couple of weeks for the body to do it. So what, if you went out and sort of fed people a lot of eggs on one day that they're not used to eating, chances are you'll see an increase in their blood cholesterol for maybe a week or two. Right. Uh, likewise, if you take someone who has a high cholesterol and you take cholesterol out of their diet, you might see a drop for a week or two, but it'll all then genetically come back as the liver readjusts. So the people you know, who have sort of fostered the cholesterol era, era um, short-term changes will change blood cholesterol, but we know now that long-term changes, it all comes back to the same number. And that's really genetically set for each individual. And you guys, I think this is really important and I really want you to take it to heart because there's documentaries that come out or people will change their diet and they'll have a short-term change in blood cholesterol and go, you know, and as a physician, you know, looking at blood for over 10 years, you'll see 
that perhaps there is a decrease in blood cholesterol. And then if you then take your, and then you'll go to the doctor and the doctor's gonna be like, oh my goodness, you, what have you done? This is amazing. And then they do the next round of blood draw and it's back to where it was, even though nothing has changed. So I think that's I'm just- sure you've seen it out. in your practice. We've seen it in the research yeah. lab. And if you do a short-term study that's maybe a month long, you'll see an effective diet on cholesterol. But if you follow it again at four months, you'll find out that eating exactly the same thing is back to the same norm, you know, the normal number. So right. it, it, you'll see short-term changes, but they simply don't mean anything. I would love for you to mention a little bit about um, insulin and cholesterol. So now, so we're talking about what we've been talking about really is just mentioning the dietary cholesterol yeah. and that there is a set point that the dietary consumption of cholesterol and then the blood, the blood um, results or the, the cholesterol in the blood is, is really largely genetically set. Yeah. However, insulin and cholesterol, there's a, there's a whole nother story there. Yeah. So uh, go back to what I said earlier, the body has an absolute requirement for about a thousand milligrams of cholesterol per day. And we're lucky basically that our liver makes it. Um, and so it's not essential in our diet because we can make all, all that we need. If we, if we didn't make it, it would be an absolute, it'd just be like a vitamin. It would be something we had to have, but we can make it. And as I said, the body will adjust the amount. The, the key enzyme in the liver is called HMG-CoA reductase. And that is really the target for statin drugs, which everyone's probably heard about. Statins will reduce that enzyme and reduce your body's ability to make cholesterol. One of the other things that you were just referring to, Gabrielle, is that insulin actually stimulates that enzyme. And so we talk about changing blood cholesterol Carbohydrate diets and high insulin will actually give you higher cholesterol than taking cholesterol in those five eggs, and so it's more of a it's more of a carbohydrate and calorie issue than it is of dietary cholesterol. The other thing that I think is interesting, and some research that I was for for many years, I was the director of research at the American Egg Board, so I funded a lot of cholesterol research, so sort of firsthand. There's a theory that one of, as you know, and I know, there are a lot of side effects of taking statins, yeah. a lot of them with muscle health and pain. And there's a theory that one of the problems is statins are so effective at reducing cholesterol production that you're actually cholesterol deficient and you lose some of your hormone effects, yes. some of the sphingomyelins and things like that. And there, there's a theory that I think people should explore more is that I think people taking statin should actually increase their egg consumption because I think it's making mm. cholesterol an essential nutrient. That's interesting. I haven't, I haven't really thought about that. It's actually really, really smart. And then, you know, you know, subsequently also think about the effect on the muscle. Yeah. Yeah. So I think muscle. it's, I think it's highly possible mm. That statins in some people are so effective that they actually make cholesterol deficiencies in individuals. That is really interesting. All right, you guys. See, I learned something. You know, I, I sit over here and I take notes because I always have ideas and I, I always learn something. And listen, I've talked to Don for years, hours, and we probably, we collectively figured out how much we've talked. I mean, gosh, it's yeah. probably been like, yeah, most people would be overwhelmed to realize just how often we talk per week. <laughs> um, that's the, that's a really, really great point. So you guys, please try not to be confused about cholesterol. We have some more details that we will talk about, but I'd like to keep these videos really short and sweet so that you get maximum absorption of it. No pun intended. If you like this video, please like it, share it, ask some questions. Can't wait to get your guys' feedback. And we really are working very hard to spend our time to educate you so that it clears up some of the confusion. Again, if you like it, subscribe, send us some comments, and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks.